That's not how you grow organs. Don't! Here's Investigation Ouch. This is how it's done. Now, don't worry, somebody isn't missing an ear. This one was made in a laboratory. Let's meet the real-life Dr Frankenstein who built it and find out more about how replacement body parts are made. This is Professor Alex Cephalian. He is working at the Royal Free Hospital in London, creating body parts out of a special substance called bioplastic. So what are you making here? You make an artery to replace damaged artery in the body. Now, an artery is a blood vessel that carries blood from your heart out to the rest of your body. And this machine is making artificial arteries by squeezing liquid bioplastic over a tube. This solidifies in water, and then when you peel it off, hey presto, you have an artery. So this is two millimeters, a very small artery. What's so amazing about this is I've handled real human arteries and this is how they feel. So could an artificial artery like this one be put inside a human being? Yes, it goes in the heart or it goes into the leg. Lots of things can happen to arteries. They can get injured, they can burst, they can get blocked. That's what happens when you have a heart attack. So if you can make an artificial artery that works, you can save millions of lives. But it's not just arteries Alex is creating here. There are more complex organs being made too. OK, this is a scaffold. Oh, so it feels very much like a real ear? Yes, indeed. But you couldn't just sew this onto a human body, could you? No, because you need to be covered with a stem cell. Stem cells stop the body rejecting the new ear, but what are they and how do they work? Well, different parts of your body are made up of different types of cells. They're everywhere. Your blood, your brain and even your hair. But stem cells live in your organs and bones too, and they're like spares. They don't have a job yet, and they're waiting to be told what to do. What's brilliant is that scientists have found a way to program stem cells, giving them specific jobs. Feel your ear right now. All that grisly stuff, that's cartilage. Now, Alex takes stem cells from the person who needs the new ear, and he puts the stem cells onto the plastic ear, and he tells them to become cartilage cells. The stem cells grow all over the plastic ear so that it won't be rejected by the body. But even with the magic stem cells, this still looks like a plastic ear. It needs skin over it. Now, Alex has done the next bit of the procedure overseas, and it went like this. Imagine I'm the patient. He placed the artificial ear covered in stem cells under the skin of the patient's arm so that it gets a good blood supply and skin grows all over it. Then, the ear, covered in the patient's own skin, is removed and repositioned where you'd normally expect to find an ear. Awesome! But Alex doesn't stop at ears. Oh, no. Two years ago, he performed the world's first successful transplant of an artificial windpipe. What's absolutely amazing about this is that doctors are now able to make replacement body parts that actually live inside your body. Now, it's early days, but hopefully soon they'll be able to make any body part. In the meantime, the next thing on Alex's list is a nose. I wonder who's going to end up with this?